You got that straight. Humboldt County is in California, but within Humboldt County, there's Willow Creek. So there's and that is uh, very close to the Patterson Gimlin footage, right? Where now, that footage was captured. Oh, you see a lot of leg movement here. Yeah. So in Willow Creek, there's Bluff Creek, and Bluff Creek is the creek where the Patterson Gimlin was filmed. But this is even more, much more recent, and very good footage. And we've got yeah, this is this is a lot of. Uh, Stomping around, going on. Yeah, you can see, you can feel the ground shake when this thing rocks, and even this, something like this is not as thick as some of the others. Is still around five hundred pounds, or maybe more if it's over seven feet tall. But yeah, I want to talk about evolution. Evolution it came into prominence with Charles Darwin's book *Origin of Species*, which was so far ahead of its time, and really is is the basis for a lot of the way people think about nature. Do you think that something is can be more evolved? It seems like with evolution... Well, let's talk about Bigfoot in general. Has Bigfoot evolved? I mean, is it, is it continuously evolving? Are they different depending on their location, you know, geographically? Oh, I, don't, I don't think so that much. Do, I, they, do they evolve to, to fit more into their geographical area? Probably to some degree, but if, if they've only been in the United States for 10... Let's say they've only been in the United States for as long as humans have, which might be around 12,000 years. We don't know, but let's just say it's somewhere along those lines. That's not enough time to have some you know, really substantial evolution, unless some there's... small changes, though. Yeah, right? there's some small changes. I mean, sometimes... Dealing with pollution. Sometimes there are big bigger leaps because of some kind of mutations and things like that and maybe some things happen all at once bigger changes happen over a small period of time at some in some instances and there, and there could be just albino bigfoot you know, we've never seen any that would be interesting well, that, to see yeah certainly would i mean but that's that's just a an anomaly it's just like you see uh, albino um lions or albino bears but that's not a norm Humans. Yeah, you see albino humans every now and then. Uh, have you seen a albino human recently? I have, not recently, but I've seen them before. Yeah, I mean, I've seen plenty on the uh, internet, you know, photos and stuff like that, but I have not seen an albino human in a uh, long time. It, it was kind of interesting. There was, uh, speaking of albinos, there was a, a black couple from, uh, they were from Africa, and they were in England, and you know the woman didn't cheat on her husband, but she literally gave birth to a uh, child who had, it was, and it wasn't an albino, had white colored skin and really? blue eyes, and straight hair, and it, it kind of made, made. And I've never heard anything about the news. It was a legitimate story. It wasn't like a National Enquirer thing. Not that National Enquirer is, is always off the track. I thought they track. had legitimate stories. Yeah, they do actually have legitimate stories, but um, they break some of the hottest. Yeah, stories. they actually do uh, to some degree, but. Um, but I've never heard anything about that. I'd like to hear more about that. That'd be that. interesting to, to do a little research on that. Yeah, I mean, like, for example, people say that, a lot of people say that the original humans that, that were either, you know, what I mean, I guess Homo sapiens at the time or Homo erectus. I'd still consider Homo erectus human. Believe me, if someone could, if someone found a pocket of Homo erectus, you know, beings somewhere in the world, like a pocket of them that survived, I guarantee you they'd change their status to Homo sapien pretty quickly because they'd say that they're, they are still our species. I'm kind of. I'm just interested, you know, kind of Bigfoot out here in the woods. You know, there's people camping all around. You get these campfires going with. Uh, they're cooking up some breakfast, maybe, or having dinner. They're not, they're not attracted by any of those scents. Yet. I think the the trackers that take these photos are so deep in the woods compared to. This isn't any close to any other humans, any campers or. No, I mean they they. I'm sure they do go into areas where you know humans encroach, but Bigfoot are primarily found in, in um, at, at least in the California region, in Washington State, and Oregon, and Vancouver. Uh, they way have, out. Yeah, way, way out, out there. So they're not attracted by any of those scents. Oh, I'm sure they're attracted to it, but they also use their discretion. And So they're smart enough to be able to, f to figure that stuff out. Well, name a, name a scent they'd be attracted to, for example. Bacon? Okay, so you, you remember on... Finding bacon. You're frying food. up some bacon in the morning, you know? Yeah, I guess that's... Frying up some potatoes? Now, in nature, would they that have... That scent could carry pretty far, you know? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's weird because in nature, you know, bears don't cook their own food, and their, their scents are based on non-cooked food, but all of a sudden you cook something, that's they still, you know, that's they're still affected by that. They're affected by... I would think so. 
Yeah, I would presume that a Bigfoot would be... Uh, and if you're out there hiking and you got a box of Cracker Jacks in your pocket, they might be able to pick that scent up. Anything, yeah. I want to talk in the next episode about Richard Dawkins. Not Richard Dawkins. Brian Sykes. Brian Sykes wrote a Who book. Who the hell is that? Brian Sykes is a geneticist from Oxford University. Very reputable. And not a, very, not a reprobate, but reputable. He's got a very good reputation on just in the um, scientific community in general, but also gaining one in the Bigfoot community because he'll, he is... Is he interested in Bigfoot research? No, I, well, I mean, I guess everybody thinks it's kind of interesting to a degree, but a lot of DNA experts don't want to test anything related to Bigfoot. Uh, come on, I don't they want don't to... They don't want to be related to They Bigfoot. don't want to be related to a stigma attached. I think our channel is actually changing that because people are seeing better photographs and they're saying, hey, wait a second, you so know, let's give us an... Maybe this is pretty legitimate then. Yes, yes, so we're... well. I want to uh, talk about Brian Sykes and a book he wrote about genetics. I, I, all that is, there are so many facets of uh, Bigfoot, uh, Bigfootology, if you will, that relate to so many different subjects, including genetics and just nature, tracking, hunting, anthropology. What else? What else? What else? What else? Photography, uh, movies we can talk about. I mean, there's so many different things, but, and, and even within science, but genetics is, is prime, in my opinion.